Hey folks, I want to do a video on um, something I personally haven't been able to find online. This is the uh, the end wand for a Delta Touch 2.0 uh, faucet, kitchen faucet. And if you haven't seen one of these before, basically the idea is uh, Delta has some electronics underneath the sink, so I'm able to actually touch the thing to turn the faucet on and off. Uh, really great when working. I've had this for a few years, uh, quite happy with it, except unfortunately this rocker, so your standard kitchen rocker for either a spray or a um, stream it's become very sort of, it's not really, needs a lube job, more or less. Um, and I was trying to figure out, okay, what do I do with this? So I've, I've looked around online, I haven't been able to find any instructions on either how to take this apart or what to do with it. Basically, it seemed like the option was to buy a new one. And I actually uh, contacted Delta, and Delta's support on these things is super awesome. They actually sent me out a new one for free. Fortunately, they sent me out a model which isn't quite identical to what I need. Uh, maybe I'll show up comparison at the end, but... Uh, I decided let's go back and actually give this one more try and figure out if I can figure out a way into it and see what's going on. And uh, it turns out uh, I can. Um, Cam can sort of focus on that. You can see I, I tried initially with the screwdriver. That works, but it's not the easiest way, and I found out in good old hindsight. So it turns out these buttons actually pop off. So put a screwdriver underneath, and without too much pressure, they just pop right out of place. Hey, a screw. Screws are always a good sign on this type of thing, right? Because that means you can probably take something apart a little bit further. So if I pop these two buttons off, so you can see the two white buttons underneath which the other buttons actually touch. But the screws what we're interested in. When we take this out, we're able to actually loosen or remove the body of the, or the internals of the sprayer. Um, before I tried multiple different ways, like I said, I tried going from the back, tried coming from the front, I tried to take this off and no love, but once that screw is out, if I give a push from the back, that's a good sign. So you gotta push this button down, make sure it's out of the way of that um, screw brace. It takes a little bit of, not too hard, but just sort of finagle it a tiny bit, and out comes the interesting part. Stop. So this is what we care about. So there's, I'm guessing, two places in here I can hit with some WD-40s when I go give it a try. I know it's not always best for plastic, but this is obviously the stage and experiment. So we'll hit that with a little bit of WD-40, and uh, we'll see if it works a little bit better. Okay, continuing. So it's actually now a few days later than the uh, first half of the video. We've made a few little changes here, and really what partially what drove this is, um, or what drove the pause was, and in the last one I was talking about using WD-40, which honestly, if we think about it, if we're gonna be working on something like, you know, parts with water, or we're gonna be, you know, consuming something into our bodies, we probably don't want to be using WD-40. Uh, and actually what's recommended is to use something like a silicone grease, silicone lube which is what this is. This came from Amazon, uh, very highly rated uh, for doing exactly what we want, which I'll show you here in a few minutes, which is lubing up little O-rings. So um, after I stopped that first half of this video, I realized I wanted to get this bridge off of here. Um, this was on here like this, right? So this is held in place, goes through this little hole here. Make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about. There's a little hole there. There it is, you can see the light coming through right there. So that's held in place. This goes on there, and then this little pin is held in there. Having fun with autofocus today, kids. So um, I'll, I'll maybe I'll throw in some static mat macros of these. This has little teeth on it, so it took a little bit of effort to push it out, but basically um, find something that has a small tip on it. Uh, this is a, um, it's a uh, pendant driver from a PhoneDoctors.com came in handy for repairing an iPhone in the past. Uh, thanks, guys. But uh, it also fits through that hole quite nicely to do what we want to do here. Say hi to the cat. Uh, so once we get that off, these two valves actually twist out. One moment. Okay, now that I've bribed the cat with a uh, treat, these two um, valves will actually twist out. Come on, autofocus. 
Um, it's going to happen? No, it's not going to happen. There we go. Maybe I can do that. And then zoom. Yeah. So these two guys actually twist out. I'll do this first one I've already lubed, but I'll show you how to remove it. If you get a, I like these pliers, but if you get some sort of pliers or something that allows you to um, go on both sides of that device or that valve and then turn clockwise. Is it clockwise? Yeah. You can only turn one way. There's a little tab there, or sorry, a tab here and a tab there. So if you try to turn it the wrong way, you'll know pretty quickly. But once you turn it about uh, 90 degrees, this whole job, you rock a little bit, or I think I use a plier sometimes too, just sort of pops out. It doesn't take too much force. Uh, and then once this comes out, uh, we see O-rings. But the one we really care about is inside. So if you push the plunger through, uh, you'll find two more in here. And that's the one which I'm actually concerned about. So that guy got some lube on this one. We'll do it to the other one now. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy back in. Uh, this little hole at the end has to line up with the rest of the unit. Otherwise, it seems like it won't. It must be keyed somehow, somewhere. It doesn't always push through fully. Um, but let's go ahead and put that guy back in. Push down to the hole. Push to make sure it's seated correctly. Then get my pliers again. Hopefully I'm not doing this too fast for you. It's pretty simple. And then just torque it back around until it locks into place. Like so. Um, so I'm going to back out a little bit and then show you this for a second one. I think that's better focus. That's blurry, sorry. Um, so let's see, this guy, I want to go ahead and turn it again, same direction, clockwise. This is the first time I'm doing this one, so this is really how easy it is. Turn 90 degrees, grab with the pliers, and pull out. Until we feel a tension release. Hey, this one has a spring. Uh, so we're going to put him to the side for a second. And then I want to cover this guy in lube. So what I'm going to do first is take a piece of paper towel to him and just clean off. There must be something on there from before. I, I can't imagine Delta would have shipped this without something. So um, clean any junk off of there. Then get my little bit of this on me. Tiny bit, doesn't take a lot. It's a problem with this stuff. Even if you get like the smallest tube, you're going to have it for the next 10 years. Hopefully it'll be useful in that time. Uh, do that. And then put a little bit on this top guy. That's really all it takes. Wipe some junk off my hands now. Put this back in. After we put in our spring, it just sits there in that hole. Nothing complex. What am I missing? Hey, what do you know? As I said, first time I did this. Put him back in here. I'm not worrying about uh, lubing these outside um, O-rings. They're not uh, moving, so it's not something I'm really concerned about right now. They seem to have a good seal. If, if the seal, if they were in bad condition or something happened to the seal, then we'd, we'd sort of think about that at that point in time, but for now, this seems to be good. So it looks like if, I don't know if we'll go see on the camera. Yeah, you can. Um, is that it? No. So right at the, let me get a light and shine on there, see if we can see it. So, right at the bottom there, you can see that there's a pin, which I want the spring to go sit right on top of that. I'll see if I can add a dot in post on this. But so I want the spring to go in center on center of that, so it gets aligned. I think that's right. No, in a few minutes. Um, go ahead and push them back in place. Grab my pliers again. Make 
sure it's correctly seated. Okay. So that feels a little bit easier to me. This one's actually springy. So you can see he, he's bouncing back now, which is what's not happening before. So that's a pretty good sign. That's, I'm pretty stoked about that. So let's see, let's make sure he's seated correctly. I'll try and do this in front of a camera instead of behind. And okay, let's see here. I want this to go back in place. So this took a little bit of effort to get off. Um, a little bit of persuasion, right? Okay, figured out the trick. So, um, imagine this was back down here. You've seen me pull this out once already. But so, uh, what I realized, what's gonna make this a lot easier, is actually, I'll start back where we were. So what's gonna make this a lot easier to try and get this piece in here, is just to pull one of the valves and put the valve in along with the metal piece at the same time, the, I don't know, let's call it a seesaw. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this valve back up. So once the valve is out, um, I'm going to bring my seesaw back. Go put them on the back part. Sort of work them down into place. Doesn't take a lot. And then I want to hook him into my hole on the front. So let's see if we can see that there. So now since he's not in alignment with the bottom part, but I'm going to go ahead and push the bottom down. Just like that. And then we're going to have to rotate that bottom part into place while the seesaw is there. Awesome. Then last but not least, we want to get our pin back into place here. So this little guy I was talking about earlier, tiny little thing, or it looks tiny on the camera. So I'm going to put him into that hole. Get him in the right place. And I think he's just gonna squeeze in with a pair of pliers. Awesome. Okay, so now I've got my jigsaw back. So it goes back in here like so. Okay, it'll be a little careful to get the back part of him lined up in the hole. If this outer ring pops out, that's okay. If not, that's okay too. So I get him back in line with the hole here. I'm gonna put this ring on the back back into place. It just sort of pops in around it. Where I did last time. Cameras wrong, so everything has to be difficult. Is there keys on it? There are. Looks like it goes in. Right there. Yep. It takes a little bit of effort, but it pushes down to place. And I want to get my screw back in here. Then I want this sit seated, seated. Put my two covers back on the little push buttons. One. Huh. And this guy goes underneath. So this little lip here, put this behind this, so you can see it. That lip goes underneath that white guy. So I'm gonna put him underneath. And then this round part snaps into, you'll see there's a, a round bar here. So you want this to end up there on that bar and then it'll snap in. So first the front goes in. Then we snap that, like that, and that's it. Hopefully it's work a little bit better, a little, be a little bit smoother, and uh, save me and you from having to buy a, another Delta Wand.